An architecture recruitment specialist joins me today to tell you exactly how to get a job in architecture. The following three steps are going to help you stand out in a highly competitive field. Applying for a job in architecture is tough and stressful. I can tell you that from my own personal experience. So Stephen Drew, who used to work in architecture and is now a recruitment specialist, joins me today to give you guys some key tips on how to make the process more successful. First things first, presenting yourself professionally is crucial, especially in the architecture and design industry, to be able to get your really good first impression. Architecture is a visual profession, so your CV, cover letter and portfolio should obviously follow suit. Designing your CV and cover letter is crucial to represent more than just a list of experiences, education, and skills that you may have. A managing director of an architecture practice that I really respect, he once told me that he believes that the CV and portfolio is actually the most important document that an architect ever does in their career because the project actually is you and you need to represent that in the best light. You almost want to brand your CV, cover letter and portfolio so that they all can read as one to be able to communicate you as a person, your skills, your passion, and your personality through your work. And what I mean by branding is being consistent and coherent with your graphics, with your font, with your color scheme, throughout your portfolio CV and cover letter so that they can all read once again as one. Because as a designer, it is vital to design your application package. And in that application package, it's important to identify the story that you want to tell and how you want to sell yourself to your application person that you're applying for. Maybe spend a bit of time thinking about what your strengths and weaknesses are and how you can potentially emphasize your strengths but also bring up your weaknesses to turn them into a positive. And of course if you're applying for a relevant job that requires a certain set of skills or certain experience you need to be able to emphasize that when you're applying for that specific job. The CV is the most important document which has all the information to an employer which should get you in for an interview. When we talk about CVs, I hope you guys have a rough idea of what a CV is, but essentially it documents your experiences, your education, your skill set. And of course, it's going to highlight the relevant achievements for that specific job that you are applying for. The CV is the first document that the employer is going to open before the portfolio. Have a look at their website. Is it clean, minimalistic? If so, make sure that is reflected in your CV. Also, have a look at the job that's advertised. Do they use Revit? Hopefully you do too. And if so, put that on the CV. Also say how many months you've used that software. Have you got a first in your course? Put that on. Have you already done some work within an architecture practice already? Even if it's work experience, put all that information on as well as any references you have so that chances are you're probably gonna get that interview. Fundamentally, your CV must be very clean, concise, and clear. You want to be able to communicate very easily your experiences, your skills, your achievements, your education, because you don't want to put someone off looking at a massive CV that is really long, that's got really, really big bulky text. You want to keep it really simple, clean, precise, and communicate it as easy as possible. You don't want it clustered. You don't want it to be filled with paragraphs of text. Keep it really minimal, literally one sentences. And I think a good rule of thumb is to stick to a single sheet of A4 or whatever kind of dimensions that you use in your CV, but keep it one sheet. You don't want to have sheets and sheets worth of experiences and achievements and, and all those kinds of things. Keep it really short, sweet, straight to the point. So someone can look at it, really quickly identify your skills and achievements and education and be able to take you to the next step in the application process. Add your own graphic touch. At the end of the day, you are a designer. Add your own graphic touch through the fonts, through the structure, the organization of the CV, through color but another important thing is not to overdo it because obviously there's one way where you keep it too simple but obviously you can make it too complicated too clustered and too many things going on you want to kind of find a middle ground where you really express your design skills and your kind of creativity but really cleanly and effectively communicate your skills and experience you can take a really boring cv from this to this simply through a bit of graphic communication Cover letters are a bit of a grey area. It's not so clear about how much information you exactly need to go into a cover letter, but a simple rule of thumb is to keep it pretty short. You don't want to go on too long and you want to dive a little bit deeper into those experiences and the relevant experiences that you have for the job that you're applying for. Your cover letter is essentially an opportunity to expand on your experiences and your skill set that you've demonstrated in your CV. 
Some architecture practices love covering letters. They use them to get a feel of the person they're hiring for. Some do not care about them. They put them in the bin. So I think it is worth spending a little bit of time on the covering letter, but don't waffle on in there. I've seen some one pages long, huge essays that I'm just never going to read. You've got to keep it succinct, clear and concise. Who you are, where you are, when you're available, why you're interested in the job, who, what, where, when, why. That's enough. Anything else... We're just babbling on. Got no time for that. Keep it clear and concise. However, to also add to what Stephen said, I would recommend you kind of touch on some soft skills that you also have that you've learned outside of architecture, but is also relevant to architecture. For example, if you have filming skills or writing skills or painting skills or web design skills, this shows that you have a capability of teaching things for yourself and you have passions elsewhere that also relate to architecture, that also might be useful for the company that you are applying for. Our portfolio, of course, is the most important thing as a designer. A portfolio is our bread and butter. It's what we use to demonstrate all of our skills, all of our experiences, our creative passions, everything about us we express in our portfolio of work, whether that's at university or within practice. And so the portfolio essentially is your lottery ticket in your application. The portfolio represents you. It represents your experiences, your skills, and your passion. And of course, it supports all of the points that you are making in your CV and cover letter. So this is where it all becomes one and why it's so important that your portfolio CV and cover letter should read as one. This of course is what's going to stand you out from the rest. Your portfolio is gonna be different. So you've got to make sure that you show your best work. Keep it clear, concise. Start with your most recent and impressive work at the front. Get all those juicy images, but keep a variety on there. Sections, plans, elevations of drawings, all good. Accent the metrics, get it in there. Some, I don't know, 3D visualizations, really good. But don't forget the technical detailing. Showcase all that work and illustrate the process behind it. If you've used Revit, put it in there. If you've used Rhino, showcase it. Tell us a little bit about what you've done, but keep the pages between 10 to 15 if you can. So you don't want anyone falling asleep when they're reading your portfolio. But also I would note that some practices will suggest a certain amount of pages that they want in their application. Some might ask for 10, some might ask for 50. Well, I doubt many can ask for 50. But make sure when you're looking at the application and looking at the application process, make sure that you're looking very clearly as to how many pages they want you to submit. And as Stephen says, it's important to highlight a variety of different types of drawings to showcase that you can put together a portfolio of work to represent an architecture project. And if the application doesn't require a specific skill set, I would highly recommend showing a range of skills through drawings, model making, digital work, and other kind of skills that you think are gonna be relevant. For example, if you're applying for a practice that do absolutely amazing models, maybe make sure that in your portfolio, you emphasize your model making skills. Or for example, if a practice that you're applying for does amazing, really clean, concise diagrams, Maybe show that in your portfolio, tailor your portfolio slightly to what you think the practice might like to see. In my experience, probably one of the hardest things is simply trying to find the right job for you in the right location and where to look. Where is the best places to look? How do I get in contact with people? Where is the best place to network? It's a bit of a minefield. And of course, depending on the location that you're in, you'll have a range of firms and practices that you have access to. For example, if you're based in London and you're looking for a job in London, you're gonna have hundreds of firms that you can look for. Large scale, mid scale, small scale, all different kinds of firms. And so this is where you've got to start identifying what kind of firm you want to apply for. Where do you see yourself working? And there are various different strategies for finding a job. Strategy one is online platforms. You've got platforms such as the AJ100, where you can see the top 100 practices in the UK in the past year. And this is a great kind of ballpark to have a kind of look at some practices that are quite accredited, are well-known, have got a good reputation, and that might be a good place for you to start looking. Of course, you've got job posts such as Dezine Jobs. And of course, you've got Instagram where you can see where practices are uploading if they're looking for jobs. They tend to share a post or a story on Instagram to say that they're looking for a specific job and you might be able to kind of make yourself aware of that. So make sure that you're following a lot of practices that you might be interested in working for and keeping an eye out for applications that are arriving. Um, and they're just kind of simple ways of looking um, for jobs online. Really big one in my opinion is cold applications. Just simply directly contacting a practice or someone within a practice to be able to send your CV, your cover letter, your portfolio, send your application package 
and get in touch with someone to see if there is anything available. And I would encourage you to even contact practices that aren't even advertising at all. Just simply email them, send them a cold email, and that might be a really good way of getting in touch with people. At the start of your career, you should send out your CV to as much places as possible. Only 20% of the jobs are advertised online. So 80% are not, which means you've got to go basically emailing those companies to increase your chances to get a job in the industry. Later in your career, when you're more established, that's the time then to get picky and speak to a recruitment consultant about exactly what you're looking for. At the start though, send that CV. What's the worst thing that can happen? You go there, you get an offer, and then you decide you don't want to take it. Or best case, you actually really like the company and you take the job that you want. Of course, the downside of this is that a lot of people might ignore you. They might not respond to you, they might delete your email, and you might not ever hear back from people. But you might get that one kind of lucky email back where they see your work and they really want to employ you. And they don't want to go out their way to put out a job post on Instagram and you've got an application in their kind of email um, email database and so that might be your lottery ticket into a practice networking is a big one and I think it's quite a daunting one as well I think quite a few people tend to avoid networking because it requires kind of putting yourself out there but I would definitely encourage you and recommend you to get signed up on LinkedIn get connected with people get in in conversations with people get into some relevant communities and also make an account on Instagram and just start sharing your work getting yourself out there and making yourself visible. And then the final job strategy is finding a recruiter like Stephen Drew. These are great people to get in contact with if you're looking for a job and you've kind of, you've gone through all of the, the online posts, you've gone through the kind of networking process, you've gone through all of the emails that you've sent to someone. Approaching a recruiter might simply be an easy case of them matching you up with someone. A recruiter will often know how to match you up with the right practice and they'll know roughly based on uh, your application what practice you should apply for and they can match you up with one and obviously Stephen is involved in this video and architecture social are powering this video i would highly recommend you check out architecture social and get in touch with Stephen. and the third point is education and training and this might not be as obvious but it's really important if you're applying for a job and you don't have the specific skills but they require you to say maybe have a really good understanding of excel spreadsheets just go out your way and do a course in Excel spreadsheets and say that you know how to use them. This might really kind of get you in the door in somewhere that requires a specific software or a specific process that they go through. If you can simply just go out your way, try not to spend too much money on a, on a crazy course, but you could find very easily find resources or videos on YouTube to just teach you those extra skills to make you stand out that extra little bit. I would pursue workshops, courses. You can enroll in one of mine if you're interested. I would look at YouTube videos like I've mentioned and just do some general research into the, the general softwares that are required for particular practices and maybe how you can just better position yourself going into a job. Looking for a job in architecture is hard. I get it. I've been where you are and I've made a lot of mistakes myself. And you have to remember that this is a process. There's a, half of it is chance, half of it is opportunity, and a lot of it is also creating your own luck. So go out there, do what you can. Make sure that you send that CV and portfolio and don't be shy. Create the opportunities for yourself and get out there, meet people, make the mistakes, learn from it. And over time, that will help you more and more to get more confident in interviews. And also you will have a better understanding of the architecture industry because you've tried. Of course it's difficult, but it's difficult for everyone. And I believe that you can do it. So go out there and make sure people know who you are and showcase your work in the best possible light. And thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please smash the thumbs up button and subscribe. Thank you, Stephen, for joining me. <laughs> I love this energy today. I hope you guys also found something very valuable and useful from him too. Um, remember that applying for a job takes time and you will get a lot of people kind of shutting you off, deleting your emails, ignoring you, but make sure that you're persistent. Keep going, keep applying, and eventually you'll find something that you love and enjoy. So thank you for watching the video. And I'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you.